Kyle says, can you explain the difference where you would use a 9-to-1 versus a 1-to-1 versus a 49-to-1 matching unit? That's a very good question. I can take a swing at it from the uh, the, the new ham, every man kind of perspective. These are transformers, and your antenna is going to want, your radio is going to want an antenna that works on 50 ohms. And so that's where you would come in to do the math. So I'm not going to do math on camera, but a one to one uh, matching unit isn't really matching anything because it's one on one side and one on the other side. Um, it's a good way to get rid of some common mode current, and it's a good way to make a center point for a dipole. A nine to one, think about, you know, nine times 50 ohms. And if you have an antenna that reads out on your antenna analyzer as being nine times greater than 50 ohms, a nine to one transformer will get you there. Uh, 49 to one is kind of a similar thing. So 49 times 50 ohms and somewhere in between. And then I'll let the mechanical engineer speak. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, um, so so one of the things that, that I, I try to explain with, uh, with the, the, the one to one Balin um, or AKA the, the common mode choke is that, you know, think of a dipole, right? We've got coax, which has the ground on the outside of the coax, the shield, um, and the, 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 you know, the driven element going down the center of the coax. And that ends up at your antenna. And uh, the driven element obviously doesn't radiate while it's shielded by the shield, while it's surrounded by the ground. But when it gets to the end, that driven element connects to a quarter wavelength piece of wire going off in one direction. And the ground connects to a quarter wavelength piece of wire going off in the other direction. So what is there to stop that shield of the coax, which has nothing blocking it from radiating from becoming part of your antenna? And it does just that if you don't do something to prevent that from happening. Depending on your setup, that can be more or less of a problem. With a perfectly resonant antenna, it's typically less of a problem. With just the right length coax, it tends to be less of a problem. But the bottom line is that if you're not using a ballon, a one-to-one -one ballon with your dipole, your coax is going to become part of your antenna. Uh, typically, that's going to throw off your radiation pattern, and it can also result in sending more RF back into your shack, giving you more uh, more noise that you're picking up through your antenna from uh, lo local radiated sources of, of RFI. So, so that's where those those one to one balance, those, those choke common mode chokes, really come into play. And uh, again, uh, I I think it. Uh, T.O. mentioned, you know, the kind of the functions of the 49 to 1 or the 9 to 1. Uh, it all comes down to matching the impedance of your antenna to the impedance that your radio wants. And impedance is really just resistance to RF. It's resistance to, to the flow of RF. And when you have a mismatch, you have an inefficient transfer of power and you have some of that power getting reflected back to your transmitter, sometimes to the point where it can do some damage or just cause funky things to happen.